So thank you very much for that. My name, as uh, Lorraine mentioned, I'm Rudaine Abdo, the founder of Veki, uh, which I founded seven years ago now. And Veki is an organization um, that brings digital literacy and e-learning in a circular economy sustainability uh, model to vulnerable communities. And we've been mostly operating in uh, Lebanon, although we have a gro uh, we're growing in Jordan and have a presence in the UAE and in the Netherlands, where I'm based right now, actually, in one camp. Uh, but the, what we want to talk about today is the digital literacy, the importance of digital literacy, and most importantly, hearing from the field, hearing from our partners, from the teachers, from the children in the field who are actually experiencing um, the, the, what, the work that we're all about. They're the ones who are doing all of the hard work. So with that, I would like to just introduce, it's going to be a bit of a conversation, and I should mention that we're going to be uh, doing some bilingual, so there'll be some, uh, we'll be doing some talking in Arabic, but then I'll, I'll be translating, so I'll be acting as simultaneous translator as well, a bit of that. Uh, but I would like to introduce um, to this session my uh, co-presenters, uh, Salwa Al-Jabri. Salwa, I met Salwa about right around the time when I started Becky and I was making many trips to, to Lebanon and she is one of these amazing uh, mentors and amazing women whom I met who uh, were reacting very quickly and very uh, innovatively to the Syrian refugee crisis that was happening in Lebanon. Lebanon um, has been host to uh, a third of the population, is about a third of the population is, is, has been from um, the influx of uh, Syrians across the border. And Salwa uh, started a school, uh, actually was involved in starting five schools and now is um, overseeing two schools in the Bikaa Valley. And Salwa will we'll talk much more about that in the near future uh, when we get into the discussion. Um, and also from the Sawiri School that uh, for which Salwa is the founder, we have, uh, we're joined by uh, Mr. Muhammad Sirri, who is a computer teacher. And we have a student, we have the, the pleasure and the honor of having Huda, um, Huda Al Adawi, who is a student in uh, grade six, a 12 year old student. So we will be hearing from them as we go through the conversation. But Salwa, I would like to start with you first. If you can please share a bit of your story in how you started um, in this space, because I know that you and I actually share a profession, architecture. Uh, we both have veered away from that. Uh, yes. So please, if you can tell us a bit about your story, how you started and where you are today with the Sawiri and the school. And if you can touch upon the, the digital aspect, please Salwa. Uh, I am, uh, as uh, Rudaina said, I'm uh, originally an architect who practiced architecture for years and years in, in, in construction. But at the moment of, uh, you know, that the Syrian crisis started, I got very much involved in relief uh, activities more than, and then little by little, I believe that education is more important than anything else. Anybody can, you know, bring in food and uh, clothes, but you have to give them something to stand on their feet wherever they are. So uh, I started getting involved. That was seven years ago or a bit more uh, with the education, with having uh, centers, educational centers in Bekaa and uh, trying our best to give them uh, the best education possible. And this is when uh, Rudaina came in with her initiative and I jumped in with her because I believed that, you know, it's not enough to, to send them to school. It was, uh, there was something more missing, uh, which is the digital literacy, which is the future. And uh, uh, this is how we got involved with Rudaina. So I, we have uh, two centers with uh, 1,450 students aged to say from KG3 to uh, grade seven. And uh, we are employing like uh, 73 between teachers and administrators other than the support uh, system of, you know, guards, janitors, drivers for the transportation. And, Thank you, uh, I don't know if you have other questions. I'm ready to. to oh, I have lots. <laughs> no? 
I was going to ask if you can please talk about the, how the schooling system is, because I believe you are operating under the afternoon school. So you've got the school yeah. shift. Can you talk to so that people can understand a bit of the context of how that yeah. is working and yeah. how that's been working in Lebanon? It's we use the premises of Lebanese schools already there in the Beka. And then we have a, an afternoon shift. When the Lebanese students leave, we bring in the Syrian students. And it's uh, and we uh, we keep them for 11 months per year. They get only August off because we want to make up for the, the time limit. We are limited in the timing in the afternoon. So we want to make sure that they cover the program uh, like any other school. And we stress a lot about, you know, their... Um, uh, live, uh, you know, their uh, mental health too, with trauma therapies, with uh, sports, with uh, sometimes, you know, a choir. And we want to give them more or less a, a complete uh, rounded education. Uh, so they feel uh, good about being there at school. It's their refuge in a way. And uh, we are hiring mainly uh, Syrian refugee uh, teachers, the majority, except for uh, a percentage of say 25 to 30 percent of Lebanese teachers, especially in English for English language, because uh, Syrians are less prepared for English language, and uh, we we try to to keep them at the level of any other uh, school in that area, uh, and I mean the quality of education is uh, uh, is our aim, so. Thank you, so. And I know when when we met, it was uh, uh, related to what the Becky's initiative, which is to bring to help with uh, digital skills, digital literacy, and to bring um, it both in terms of education, bringing educational tools, as well as the how to learn and use technology, whether it's software programs or what have you. So can you tell, uh, talk a little bit, please, about how you, your early thinking in incorporating and setting up the computer lab, incorporating that, what your um, goals were and if you feel that these, these have been achieved. It's, I mean, the main thing is for them, it's they're not, I mean, they're families who are, who do not have laptops or, I mean, the maximum they have in their, in their tents, I wanted to say in their houses, it's mainly in their tents or in the room they, uh, they, uh, they live in, they have uh, smartphones and it's the maximum they get. Uh, exposed to. So it was very, very important when uh, Rudaina came in with the initiative of, you know, providing us with the laptops. Uh, it was a great idea because immediately we uh, we distributed those laptops to our teachers. We got them trained. So immediately there is a step up in the educational, at the educational level. And then with the uh, starting a computer lab in Sawiri school, uh, that was the, the big, uh, big step in because we couldn't have left them, you know, they would be marginalized if they are not exposed to digital uh, uh, learning, they, are, they cannot continue like everybody else. And this proved to be very, very important when the, with the COVID uh, pandemic, when they had to go in, we had to go into uh, digital uh, learning. So if the teachers were not ready with, the, with this training, with the, being uh, familiar with the laptops, with the, with the digital uh, uh, capacities, they wouldn't have done it. And the, the students were already exposed to it. It could it couldn't have done been uh, uh, done at all. Yeah, so. I remember the conversations when right at the beginning of COVID lockdown. I think it was March when we realized you know we've got all of these uh, computers and the computer labs that have been set up in all of the different schools that we that we operate in, and then everything is shut down. So there was a very quick pivot and I was so impressed by how quickly you brought all of the teachers, we did the distribution of the laptops to the teachers so at least they in their homes could continue and then it was teaching through WhatsApp and so we launched that teaching with WhatsApp uh, tips and trips campaign, to trips, tricks and tips campaign to help um, initiate that. So where are you now in terms of in person, teaching at school, hybrid, and and no, given no, also. No, this I mean, there was a time it was hybrid last year. There was a time when they were uh, going. They divided each classroom in two groups because of COVID. 
So uh, there would be less numbers in the classrooms. So they were coming three days per week at, uh, to the school and three days they're staying home. And each group, they were alternating. But now this year, since September, it's in person. Uh, but we did not, uh, I mean, we learned a lesson that of the importance of digital uh, uh, learning. So they we are continuing to having, uh, you know, we're stressing more on uh, the computer lab that it, before uh, we used to give classes only for uh, grade four, five, six. Now everybody from grade one on goes to the computer lab. It's not like before because it's very important. We've, it, we found out that it's a must. And then at the same time, we're introducing even inside the classroom interactive uh, lessons where they use, they have some tablets and they use them to in the classroom. Super, thank you. And uh, I just want to touch upon the current situation in Lebanon, which has been going on for over well over a year now, uh, and the crisis. There's a tremendous economic crisis, and there is um, uh, very limited internet and power uh, electricity throughout the country. It's not just in the camps and in the vulnerable communities, but throughout. So we, uh, I just want to say, um, we just uh, last week, <laughs> just le less than a week ago, we did um, in collaboration with with another foundation called So Powerful, a Dutch foundation and Becky uh, and Temkin, we installed uh, a solar power system in the Sawiri Temkin school. And it's actually 1,100 students who get, uh, who can get, this. the school is powering for 1,100 students with the morning and afternoon shift. And we're finding out, we're still, we will be monitoring the system, but um, we can get um, full power with just the, the solar system. Uh, which will enable the school to continue operation and it will enable the, um, uh, the, the computer labs and all of this technology to continue operating because this is um, a, a huge issue in Lebanon across the board, across all sectors. Uh, so we, we're very looking, very excited about monitoring that and seeing if we can also be bringing this to many of the other schools. Um, so Selwa, I think you also, we were talking about um, uh, the, the teachers are using the computers as well. And um, how have you, what would you say that the impact has been on the, not the content learning, because we, what we provide is not core curricular, it is um, supplementary learning. And there are some subjects that, that touch upon the core, the, the core subjects. But what would you say, has there been an impact on the, the general education, the general uh, subject learning of the of the students and what kind of feedback are you getting from the from the teachers on that? Oh, you're muted, Selwa. Selwa, you're muted. Uh, I, I mean, it's mainly uh, how the easiness of using the, the laptops is, is a great plus for the students. And at the same time, it's helping them uh, to, to master English much more uh, by to have more vocabulary. And they're enjoying, they, they are enjoying the experience of learning more than it's a, it's a change from a book and notebook uh, being in front of the laptop and you know it's like a game in a way you're learning and it's like a game for them so they are enjoying it and they're profiting a lot from the programs it's an addition to all what they are doing it's really a, a, a big addition to them mm -hmm. Salwa in the years that you've been operating because it's been many have any have you graduated any students Yes, we have one of our students who graduated. He's at AUST studying communication, media and communication. And by pure chance, he has been teaching in our school now. Uh, uh, you know, as a, uh, from time to time, he comes when we need an extra hand. He comes and teaches the students and helps in the computer lab. He is one of our, our students who graduated in, uh, in he, he got his baccalaureate on uh, in 2018. Okay, are there others? That's wonderful. That's, that's wonderful. At the university, yes, a lot of them. 
especially, I mean, who, whoever, because at a certain point we were following them uh, in 2018, uh, before, the, before the COVID and before, so we were following up to the uh, baccalaureate and then uh, they got a group of them got a, some kind uh, of a scholarship at a UST and uh, there most of them now, either they graduated this year or they will graduate next year. So how many, from when you started, how many students would you say have come through your school? Because you've, 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 you've educated thousands of, of children. I, it's very difficult to, because I was involved first in five schools. So we had 3,000 students. Now we have half, uh, yes, per year. And then on top of that, there are uh, students, that are special on special programs that I follow separately out of those sc uh, schools uh, who are preparing for their ninth grade and the baccalaureate. Uh, to give them, you know, uh, those uh, official certificates to be able to continue. And then there is a, uh, like, a, we, I follow with them, there is a scholarship, uh, a fund for uh, uh, university students. So whoever is finishing from the education, the high school, they, I follow them with the fund for university students too. But it's very difficult to give you a number. It, it, it's impossible. Almost. It's in the thousands, though. <laughs> I well, it's, yes. Well, it's amazing what you're doing. Thank you so much for doing what you're doing, for stepping into Thank this you. and filling the, this I, void. Elena, you, you gave us, you have a lot of initiatives. I mean, every time you come up, you come in with a new uh, uh, idea, and I run and hold it immediately. I stick to it because I know that it's for the benefit of the students. Thank you very much for your support, Rudina. No, thank you because what you know, people like Salwa and others are doing is stepping in and filling a void because there were so many, there were hundreds, hundreds of thousands of children that were beyond the capacity of the state, beyond the capacity of the INGO. So it's really critical work that you're doing, and and we all thank you for it, Salwa. There is a big need. I mean, whatever we are doing is nothing. It's a drop in the notion, but we have to do it as yeah. much as possible. No, well, I believe that all of these drops in the ocean fill it up and make a difference. So thank you. Um, I'm going to shift now to the actual in the classrooms and those the, the champions and the heroes who are actually doing the, the, the real work in the classrooms. And um, Mohammed and Huda, welcome. I just would like to introduce you first, Mohammed Siri is uh, a computer teacher at the Tamkeen School and has been uh, with Salwa. I think if you want to talk a little bit about this, Mohammed and um, Huda is a 12-year-old student in grade six who's been with the school also for a time. Okay, I'm going to mix it between Arabic and English and I'll just keep on jumping so that's okay. So, Ustaz uh, Muhammad, if you could tell us a little bit about the background of your background, how did you start the computers and how long you've been in the How long you've been in the school, your background, and teaching computers, please? I started before the Syrian 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 بهال يعني خلال لحد الوقت اللي احنا فيها لا صار لي تقريبا شي اربع سنوات مع جمعيه علم تنفيذ. So you've been with the school since 20 for about four years um, and انت بتعلم الكمبيوترز in particular you, you are with the computer lab. نعم. So do you uh, can you tell if you could tell us how كيف the كيف الوضع كم من مش كم من اجهزه في وقديش كيف التلاميذ قديش بيجوا على الكمبيوتر لاب هلا انا تقريبا عندي 25 لابتوب وعندي 40 طالب يعني تقريبا بيقعد كل اثنين على اللابتوب ويعني بيصفى مثلا يعني كم طالب بيقعد على اللابتوب لحاله يعني بس انا okay. عندي بس رح ضلني اتشك اوكي okay. اترجم شوي شوي بليز سو في ذير از ذير ار اباوت 25 كمبيوترز لابتوبس ان ذا كمبيوتر لاب اند اتس تيبيكلي تو children to a laptop so it's peer learning or it's two children who are, are at a uh, computer so about 40 students which is a typical average size of uh, of a classroom 
um, that are in the computer lab at one time. Red one to uh, grade six. So grade one, from grade one to grade six. وأكمل بيجوا مرة بالأسبوع مرتين بالأسبوع أكمل مرة بيجوا بالأسبوع. كل طالب مرة بالأسبوع بيطلع له أرب بيطلع له ساعة بالأسبوع. So every student every student gets one hour of computer learning per week from grades one through grade six. So وقت تكون عم تشتغل معهم بيكونوا في منهم عم بيبشوا أول مرة وفي منهم صلون أكمل سنة. عم بشتغل بي فيك تحكي شوي كيف انه وقت يبقى اذا صغار او كبار كيف الصغار بيتعلموا وكيف الكبار بيتعلموا يلي اكبر شوي how the learning from younger children versus older children how that is اصغر على طول يعني اول ما يفوتوا على الكمبيوتر بي يعني بيكونوا مثلا متلبكين شوي مو عارفين يشتغلوا لما عم يشوفوا التطبيقات انه اسلوب العاب كثير عم يبسطوا بالحصه وعم يصير في كثير تفاعل بالحصه يعني انا تفاجات كثير من الطلاب وتفاعلهم وانتظارهم بالحصه بالنسبه هيدا للصغار بالنسبه للكبار يعني so خليني بس اطش بس شوي سو ذا يونج وانز ار فيري انثوزياستيك اند ذي ريلي دو انجوي كامينج اند ليرنينج اند ذي ذي تيك ات اون كوايت كويكلي والاكبر وسالوا اذا اذا عم بعمل اذا بدك تساعديني شوي بال اذا عم شيء تعطيني كمان يو ونت مي تو تيك اوفر نو 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 اتس اوكي بس اذا عم اذا عم عم بسيك اني ثينك يو ار دوينغ فيري ويل اند ذا اولدر كيدز واللي اكبر شوي استاذ محمد يو ار ميوتد يو ار ميوتد هلا صرت او او يو ار ميوتد اي وندر يا بالنسبة للطلاب الأكبر عم يأخذوا شغلات أدفانسد أكثر من هيك مثل مثل مثلا يعني أنا كثير انبسطت بهالشغلة اللي عملتها معهم يعني كمان حتى مثل لنا في أسلوب لعبة يعني بيرسم بطريقة البكسل آرت هي بالنسبة للتصميم في برنامج جيمب موجود بيرسم الولد بأسلوب البكسل آرت أسلوب برسم ورقي بيكسل سوري آرت. Pixel, pixel art. art. Okay, teaching the older kids uh, pixel art graphics. مثل مثل ألعاب الفيديو القديمة إذا بتذكروها كانت كل الشخصيات مبكسلة يعني عاملة بكسل. Yes. بيرسمها like... على برنامج الجيم أي شخصية محددة له عم يرسمها على برنامج الجيم وبيختار اللوحة الرسم ولوحة التصميم بيشتغل عليها. So he's teaching graphics and uh, somewhat like animation, but different graphics programs so that they can uh, manipulate uh, characters. and learn how to use the graphics programs. وبعدين عنا البرمجة كمان الولد عم يشتغل بالبرمجة وخاصة أنتوا بعد ما يعني دعمتونا وشكرا كثير على الروبوت كمان الولد صار يشتغل روبوت روبوتيك زائد بروجرامينج مع السكراتش صار يدمج السكراتش مع البرمجة مع مع السوفت وير مع الهارد وير. اوكي. صار يشتغل اثنين سوا. And I, I know that uh, Mr. Muhammad is, uh, has really been a champion with, for coding and uh, using Scratch, which is we always preload Scratch on all of the laptops for offline learning. So um, uh, Scratch and then leading to actual robotics, because one of the partnerships that we had also with Accenture allowed us to bring in a bunch of robotics kits. Um, and uh, Mr. Muhammad has been a champion in this and bringing the students in for competitions come on and optamlu competitions. بهدولي اذا بتذكر مزبوط مش هيك؟ نزلنا على فيك مسابقة فيك تحكي شوي عن عن ونزلنا نحن على مسابقة وطبعا كثير ساعدونا لابتوبات ذكي بموضوع الشغل تبعنا يعني خاصة على شغل برنامج فرايزن تبع تصميم النظارات الالكترونية ساعدتنا كثير بهالقصة والحمد لله اخذنا نحن كجمعيتنا اخذت تقريبا المرتبة الأولى بالكودينج طلابنا اخذوا المرتبة الأولى بالكودينج على صعيد لبنان. امتى كان؟ امتى كان؟ تقريبا 2018 2018 كان اول مره. اوكي. So when when they started the 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 robotics um, program and teaching the students robotics, they entered a competition amongst a number of schools and they won. <laughs> so Elf Mabruk, uh, Elf Mabruk on this. Um, I have a question. Uh, in Scratch, we, we I know that we put Scratch in uh, many languages. Uh, do you do it in Arabic or in English? What it is called Scratch? Do you do it in Arabic or in English? Yeah, in English, in English. Oh, okay. 
تقليد انجلش ما فيني استخدم فيني استخدم عربي بس في بالعربي استخدم انجلش مع فيني استخدم بستخدم مع اولاد بالانجلش لانه الاوامر كلها بالانجلش بس Okay, uh, so they use Scratch mostly in, in English, even though it's uh, you could use it in Arabic as well. Um, what are the biggest challenges that you face? You and the students, what do you think are the biggest challenges with computers? كل العبارة عن ألعاب بس أتقن الولد عن طريق اللعب الشغل كله بس أنا الصعوبة الوحيدة اللي أنا ما خبرت عليها أنا أنه أنا بتمنى يكون في عدد أجهزة كافي أنه لكل ولد يطلع له لابتوب يشتغل عليه لأنه أنا عدد اللابتوبات غير كافي كل ولد بيطلع كل طالب كل طالبين قاعدين على لابتوب واحد فأنا بتمنى يكون عندي لابتوبات أكثر لأنه نحن عدد طلاب نحن عدد المدرسة عنا وعدد طلابنا كبير كثير فنحن بحاجة كمان يعني لأنه أنا سبق وخبرت إنه نحن عنا بكل شعبة 40 طفل تقريبا ف 25 جهاز ما عم يتوفى أو ما عم يلحق الولد كثير يطبق أنا بس إنه هاي الشغلة الصغيرة بس إنه عم نوه عليه إنه كرمال يكون في عنده وقت زيادة يطبق يكون آخر يعني آخر وقته كله لللابتوب هو يشتغل عليه all right. Hello, uh, I asked about uh, the challenges, and Mr. Muhammad first said that actually the um, on the learning side, it's, it's the, the gamified because we have a lot. We 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 present offline learning, so we preload the laptops with a whole wealth of educational material, and it's all drag and drop and interactive learning. And th those gamified kind of uh, learning programs are extremely beneficial, and the students love them. And, and the biggest challenge that he finds is that. Um, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship with a laptop um, because it's um, 40 kids to a classroom and the computer lab can only uh, has enough space for 20, 25 laptops. So he would love for there to be uh, opportunities for the students to have um, to just uh, have a one-to-one -one relationship with um, with a with a laptop and Salwa, oh, you're back. So maybe Salwa, we can try to work towards that, maybe setting up a second computer lab or splitting up the, um, the classroom in half or so that they have the opportunity for one-to-one. -one. Yes, and then I want to mention too that we, we have two computer labs, one in this school and then another one in the second school which you allowed us to, to uh, set up. So it's already a big thing. I mean, two computer labs, but the numbers of students are big. If we want to bring in the, the class, the full class, uh, it's uh, maybe if we can get more uh, laptops, then we, uh, we need more space to put them in a different room and we divide them in two. Uh, yes, we have to work on that. Or maybe we can uh, brainstorm a little bit on that as well. Maybe we can do split classrooms so that partly uh, and it, I think potentially, probably uh, peer learning when they are two, two at the same time could, has its benefits as well. So if it could be a mix of both, one to one as well as uh, two learning. Ela bitshuf eno fi ishia kaman bifido baad bifido bifido lulad wa taikunu tnen ma baad am bishchulu kaman. Ento aw bitfadil eno bas taikunu wahed a wahed kulu lwaat. La ana bsaraha bsaraha bfadil eno yikunu kul talib lhal eno ahyana. بس انا عم يشتغلوا اثنين بقول لك لا انا هلا دوري انا لا استاذ ما اعطاني انا الوقت الكافي لي رفيقي مثلا يعني هي هي في يعني هذول اطفال بالنهايه يعني ولد بيحب التملك يعني انا يعني نحن عددنا كبير عدد الطلاب كبير فبيتمنى يكون عنده لابتوب هو يشتغل يطبق لحاله يعني هلا مثلا عم يطبقوا شغله اثنين يشاركوا بيقول لك انا اللي ساويتها لا هو اللي ساواها لا انا فبيصير الولد ما عنده عنده ثقة بحاله انه هو اللي اشتغل هالشغله، فانا بس هالشغله اللي عم الاقي فيها عائق انه يكون الولد هو متملك الجهاز لحاله هو مطبق لحاله وعم يورجيني شغله لحاله ما يصير في لخبطه بينه وبين رفيقه، لانه اثنين هن شاغلين وانا اثنين بدي اعمل بقول انتم اثنين اشتركتوا بهذا الشغل وانتم اثنين اللي عملتوا هالشيء، بس انا حابب انه يكون لكل واحد له شغله الخاص وغير هيك اوكي خليني بس ترجم بس لحظه هيز جست توكينج مور اباوت ذا تشالنجز اوف وين ذي ار تو بيبل تو تشلدرن يوزينج ذا سيم لابتوب there sometimes can be a little bit of conflict because the students are, you know, I did this, no, it's my turn. So there's a little bit of um, uh, just trying to figure out how to interact with each other. But I guess Kaman Heda, this can help with um, learning how to work with each other. Kaman Bitaala Mokifi So hopefully this would lead to, to better 
life skills and learning skills and they see it all a monkey for it on a we chat a comes out بس انا بقول انا انا ريلي اجري بحب الولد يكون يشوف يكون له الشغل الخاص انه له ملف الخاص له شغله الخاص انه كل طفل له فايل خاص فيه لشغله يعني انا كرمال هيك كرمال انه يكون له شغله الخاص عليه بس انا هذا هيك فكره تبعي يعني he'd like to see every child have their own folder so uh, and they're to be able to show their own work so maybe let's let's after this offline let's uh, Let's discuss this and see how we can help with uh, setting this up so that you can you can have that um, uh, work for for your students. And now, speaking of students, I would like to switch and bring in Huda. Uh, Huda, it's uh, lovely to have you here. But can you speak Arabic or English or مخلوط? I'm going to switch between Arabic and English. But I heard you speak English the other day, and you're excellent. <laughs> so can you please just uh, say a little bit about yourself? How long you have been in the school for? Um, I already mentioned that you're 12 years old in grade six. But how long have you been in this school for? How long have you been in in uh, Sawiri? And how long have you been learning with computers, with laptops, with uh, Saz Muhammad? Can you speak in Arabic? Sure, if you can speak in Arabic, but speak in Arabic. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I at this uh, like with Madrasa, how long have you been at the school for? I am from grade uh, one at, uh, at the Sawir school. Since grade one. Bravo. And how long at this family camp this family computers after I'm to to the students be to tell me the computers as you say. From grade four. From grade. So you've been working with computers for now almost three years. Now. I'm to share this family camp with computers for about three years. Ah, now this family camp. We're not in the middle of the year. We're not in the middle of the year. Because there was Corona. Okay, right, right. Of course, last year there wasn't any computer learning because there wasn't any in-person school, so you missed out on all of the computer learning. So basically, so like since then, like I'm just generally I'm to the same with computer at my age, is it? Yes. Okay, and what do you what do you enjoy most about uh, using computers? In addition to when you when you go to the computer class, when you go to Mr. Muhammad's. Uh, Classroom, but it's really under Mr. Muhammad. Al Safunik. What other things do you like? What other things do you like to do here? I like to play with the computers, like that, and learn new things from Abdi. Because the computers are very enjoyable. We can learn about the computers, and we can play with the computers, and we can play with Mr. Muhammad. وكثير كنا نفرح لما تكون عندنا حصة الكمبيوتر لأن تطبيقات ذكية كثير كانت تعلمنا وبتمنى أن تكون بكل المدارس. So she really enjoys probably from what I gather favorite time is when she goes to the computer class with Mr. Muhammad and wishes that everybody had that opportunity to to be able to to work with computers. وقد إيش عندك ساعة أنت كمان عندك ساعة بالأسبوع حصة بالأسبوع ت تشتغل مع كمبيوترات one hour a week of working with computers. وشو بتلاقي أصعب شيء؟ وين تستصعبي؟ شو الأشياء اللي بتلاقي هون يل تستصعبي في هون ما بتحبي هون بالكمبيوتر؟ What do you find challenging and difficult with computers? I don't find anything is difficult in the computer. Okay, well then we need to give you better challenges. Like أنا راح أحط في حط أشياء أصعب عليك. Um, do you have a favorite program? If you have a program or something, what do you like most from the programs that are available on the web? I like the Scratch. Okay. Can you tell us a bit more? What have you done with Scratch? Tell us a bit more. What have you done with Scratch? And 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 what have you done with Scratch? Did you use the, the robots? So, شو عملتوا؟ احكي شوي أكثر إذا فيكي. صممنا لعبة مع الأستاذ محمد سري ف ع شكل روبوت وانه صرنا من نلعب فيها. صممنا لعبة وتشبه صار روبوت كمان وبرمجتوا عليها الألعاب وصممتوا لعبة كاملة عليها وإجابات. Mm. Mm. 
Sabrina, tell us about the, what you built, what you programmed. We want to hear. تفضلي خبرينا شو أكثر. وكمان لما تعلمنا على تطبيق الروبوت لما صممنا لعبة الروبوت كتير فرحنا وأخذنا جائزة عليها مع الأستاذ محمد سري. Wow, so you are one of the award winners for the robots competition. Bravo. <laughs> Bravo عليكم. هدى بالبيت في عندك في عندك أجهزة أو عندك تليفون أو شيء فيك تستعمليه. At home, do you have access to computers or a smartphone or a way to continue digital learning? What is much only in the house? I use uh, my uh, brother's uh, phone. I don't have uh, anything. Okay, so you use your brother's phone. Do you use it for to continue um, to continue your schoolwork, or do you use it to? Um, to communicate with your teachers or just to play games or how do you use it? I, I use the phone for uh, different things, for uh, for uh, connected with my teachers and uh, for uh, researching in uh, Google about uh, something and uh, to play a simple game. Okay, very nice. Uh, Huda, I want to ask you, when you started in the school, did you speak English? Did you know English when you started school? Did you know any English before you started with uh, Ms. Salwa? No, I started in the school, I started to speak English. So, you started in the school, you only started learning English in, in school. Well, you speak it very well. Bravo. <laughs> well done. Um, so I'd like to just bring it back and Selwa um, ask you, you've, you have, you are living this experience. You're the one who's enabling this experience um, with these wonderful, beautiful teachers and students and the community. And I know I've you know, been to the, your school so many times and I see that you are in fact upholding a community. It's not just the children in the school. It's a direct contact with the community and you're just dealing with uh, the transportation, and this is no small deal. I know it's absolutely no small deal, especially now in Lebanon when there is no fuel, there is no um, uh, transportation. I, at the time, back in the day, I think it was a third of your costs. Now I imagine how much is taking... Very, very. I mean, it's as costly as the education itself. It's a, it's a very, very challenging uh, thing, transport to... Uh, uh, transportation and without transportation they cannot come to school and so we're paying much more uh, to find uh, I mean the fuel is very scarce by the time you find it it's extremely expensive and still we have to do it otherwise we close the school if you cannot provide transportation they cannot come to school and no. uh, this is the biggest challenge and there is another challenge too that came out with the problems in Lebanon uh, because of the economical problems, uh, other than the cost of living uh, getting very, very high. So the Lebanese families are not able to send their children to public schools, uh, to uh, private schools, sorry. They're sending them to public schools. So uh, there, are, there is no more room for the Syrians to attend school at the public schools. So there is a bigger need now to have uh, schools for the refugees much bigger than before uh, i mean the whole system is uh, is changed because uh, of the situation in lebanon it's yeah. uh, i mean the two biggest uh, challenges are the transportation and the need for more numbers of uh, centers for uh, for the refugees Really, this yeah. is why it's cool. I mean, I wish we could uh, uh, make classrooms for 25 students. We cannot do that. I mean, we're taking 40 students per classroom because uh, you cannot refuse to uh, uh, children when you can fit them in, even though it's a big challenge for the for the teachers. So uh, to to deal with big classrooms. Yeah, I remember when we were talking during COVID and with all of our partners. 
and they're saying, oh, COVID, that, that's, the, that's the least of our worries. We've got so many other worries to worry about. We've got no fuel. We've got a financial crisis that has devalued the currency 90%. Um, then, of course, the, ex the Beirut port explosion happened and all of the political situations. So it's like, oh, you know, COVID, that's an easy one to deal with almost, which is um, nothing to laugh at. This I remember also, Selwa, when we were speaking at the beginning of the school year back in September, I was used to hearing, you know, you've got 450 students in the school and seven, suddenly that number jumped up to 700, almost 50 or 730. Exactly. This is why, I mean, if we could take 900 a week, I mean, there is a, this big demand. It's, it's. Uh, uh, I wish we could take more. The 750 was the maximum we can fit in this, in each one of those two schools. Otherwise, if there was one more classroom, it would be filled in one second because uh, there are people on waiting list to go in. But at the same time, uh, you know, some of them would go, some, a few are going back to Syria because of the economic uh, situation, so they leave. Uh, some of them change addresses, so there is this movement between, it's not, it's not uh, like, you know, a regular student who settled at home with his parents. They could move because their parents are not finding good jobs or they could move back to Syria because there is no way to stay in Lebanon anymore because of the economical crisis. So there is a, a small percentage of students that enrolls in the beginning and then during the year they, uh, they move out. But, and then we try, if it's in the beginning of the year, we take others, but now it's too late to... Uh, to enroll other students because uh, they, they did not follow the program from the beginning. I think but, there was only 50 students, right? You lost about 50 students from the beginning of the school year, if I... Exactly, exactly. Over the seven, we started with 750. Now we are at 700. So, uh, but... Selwa, the students then, since there's so much, so many, so much demand came with the, with the crisis and when there was a huge shift in Lebanon from the private schools to the public schools of the Lebanese students, which then took the seats away um, yes. for the refugee students. You've taken so many, but what about those who don't have, who are not absorbed in a school like Sawiri? How do you know what's happened? Are there children who are going without schooling entirely? Uh, some, yes, yes, yes. I mean, there are other, of course, NGOs who are working in that field, but it's not enough. It's not enough to absorb all the numbers. And uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's a big problem. It hasn't been easy at all. And uh, what do you do? And uh, I mean, funding is not easy too, for, because of the problems of the banking system in Lebanon. Some uh, some people are uh, reluctant. They don't want to transfer money to Lebanon, or they're not allowed to transfer money to Lebanon. Or these are some of the big, big, big problems we're facing. It's yeah. not easy yeah. to meet ends at the end. No, and this is if you are if you are fortunate enough and have been able to very. Um, skillfully manage to get these all of this funding to keep to sustain you because it's not like you have a business model you're educating children there is no revenue coming back off of that this yes. is, so you need that sustained funding and and greater funding and I have to ask you what what keeps you going how do you get your sources of strength and I'm going to ask that question to Mohammed and Huda as well under all of these very challenging situations that just keep on, we keep on saying in Lebanon, it's not, it's, it can't get worse. And then, boof, we're slammed again with another thing that happens. Where do you it's, find your source of strength? It's, it's believing in education. I always believe that this is the best thing that you can give to children. It's education. Yeah. I mean, I believe in it so strongly, I could, you know, fight 24 hours per day for it, I tell you. This is what gives me this the strength. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, Salwa. Okay, I'm going to ask Sazam Hamad Huda into command into Aishin and Har Waranhar Wanarhar Hal Wada al Sayy Wudalu Sir Asya Asya Kif 
And I know Mrs. Muhammad, when we're in communication, you're always so cheerful, so giving, and you just want to help. كيف تلاقي كل هالقوة وكيف كيف كيف تضلكم نهار بعد نهار ماشيين؟ هلا الحمد لله يعني يعني الوضع بدنا نتعايش فيه نحن عشنا الاسوء كمان بسوريا yes. يعني وكمان انا ما بننسى انه كمان وضع الكهرباء كثير سيء بس وما بننسى انا كمان يعني كمان شكرا كثير لك انا بدي اتشكرك كثير على اللي قدمتي لنا مشان قصه الكهرباء للمدرسه لك كل الشكر وانت من ال... كمان الناس اللي لك فضل على الطلاب السوريين مثل المدام سلوى على الشيء اللي عملتوه معنا يعني شكرا كثير عن جد شكرا كثير مع رغم الوضع السيء انتم قويتونا بهالشيء اللي عملتوه معنا والله. كفيتوا وفيتوا والله. هيك سبحان الله. هيك منشنينج ذا سولار بانلز. اي مين ذيس از انذر انيشيتيف اذر ذان ذا ديجيتال ليرنينج اتس يو بين يو نو سمثينج ويز بروفايدينج ذا سولار بانلز تو ذا سكول. سيفير اتس ا سيفير. Yeah, I hope it really will make the big difference because without power and it's uh, tough to carry on life. I mean, for education, yes, digital, yes, but life in general is really hard to continue. And Mr. Muhammad was saying just, uh, yes, you know, thank goodness things are going and they lived through far, far worse from where they came from previously in Syria. So it's just moving on day by day. And I, I want to actually close this conversation by turning it back to Huda. وهدى بدي اسالك انت شو بتتمني تعملي وقت تكبري بعد خمس سنين بعد عشر سنين شو شو هدفك شو حلمك what are your dreams what are your hopes ااا حابه اني اصير دكتوره لحتى اساعد الناس المحتاجين وان شاء الله كل واحد محتاج تساعده والله لا يمرض حدا إن شاء الله حبيبتي. Um, Huda's dream is to become a, um, a doctor so that she can help those who need the help. Um, well, thank you all. Yani, <laughs> thank you. You are you are my inspiration. Actually, I'm going to turn the question on to me. And you are my inspiration. You're the reason I, I started back in doing what I'm doing. Sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, it's just incredible what you do. And what you have to go through all the time. Um, so maybe at this point we um, welcome any questions, any um, uh, questions from the audience, and please feel free to either put things in the chat or um, uh, or, or put yourself on camera. <laughs> any questions? Okay, I'm going to have, I've, I've got one question. Um, Salwa, I'm very impressed by you. And maybe this isn't a real question, but how do you, Lebanon is so challenging. We just finished a project in Lebanon, the power went off. How do you do it day by day, working with all these children? What gives you your strength? It's It became my priority. And I have to, to tell you, small joke even my husband is telling me sometimes i mean you're not giving me enough uh, attention consider me a syrian refugee so you give me more attention <laughs> because it's it became my really my life i think it's my daily 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 life to follow it and i want to make sure that it's not just education it's quality education for me yeah. They should get a quality education similar to any other child. It's their right. We cannot deprive them from this. I don't want them to come up one day and then still beg for food or any any help. No, they have the right to get the education, stand on their feet and be productive. So wherever they are in any country they are in the world, they have to be productive and responsible. It's not just the books, it's not just the program, it's a, a, a whole life that you're building. You're giving them confidence, you're giving them uh, a reason to be there. It's, uh, I mean, I don't know what to say anymore. It's really, it became my life. Yeah. You're giving them their future. Thank you. Anyone, anyone else have any questions? 
anyone else? Okay, I've got another question for you, Rodena. So mm -hmm. what's next? You've achieved so much and so, so, you know, since we've met, since I last saw you. And every time I speak to you, you seems to be doing more and more. What, what next for Thaki? Yeah, thank you, Lorraine. And you were one of my early, <laughs> amazing champions and uh, somebody who has helped so much from day one. Um, it, we have, well, it started, Thaki started by, first of all, waste electronic waste for one entity in an affluent society, taking that and repurposing it to give meaning and delivery of education. But to me, I was, I was focusing on laptops because we can get them from corporations as donations. We don't pay for them because they um, can hold a lot of offline learning where our image is now about 100 plus gigs. And very importantly, you get the keyboarding functionality. And you can do things like programming and graphics and word processing. And so it's, it's beyond the swipe of a tablet and a phone and every, every one of these gadgets has its place, but this is where our focus was on. So there is the hardware and then there is the educational content. Um, so we've got the hardware education content. And by the way, we're a logistics operation as well because we have to get them from country to country and move things around. And then it became very clear early on that um, putting these in front of teachers who've never used computers or have the ICT pedagogy or how to apply this learning um, has its limitations. And, the, um, and then it also will not allow the, the children to get to where they need to with the learning. So in fact, actually it was with uh, Selwa's earlier schools we did uh, in collaboration with another organization, there was uh, teacher training uh, on a uh, hands-on, but it was very expensive. And I quickly realized this is not scalable. It's not affordable. It's not sustainable. We can't do this, but we have to get the teachers to be comfortable and trained and be able to use, uh, to operate in a digital environment. So we started um, what we're calling a teacher digital toolkit and it's, the genesis of this goes back about five years and there was um, you know some pushback you know you have to have hands-on training but um but then COVID happened and that changed the story and then everybody had to come on board and that really escalated our development of the digital training and we're actually at the threshold in the next week inshallah we will be launching our um for us a flagship a massive project that we've been working on for almost two years which are, it's a bilingual teacher training um, resource kit, which is courses, self-guided courses, and model lesson plans and um, video tutorials, uh, it's bilingual. So we did it all in-house with educators and media specialists and what have you. Um, so, and we've been testing it um, thanks to a grant by the Catalyst Foundation for Universal Education. So the training, training of teachers is a critical part. So we've been hardware content training, and um, lately also now we're getting into content creation. Um, we have a project that's funded by the Dutch, uh, Dutch government to create a child trauma program that has been developed by a Dutch research entity called TNO and it's been tested and done in uh, South Sudan, but as a, an in-person model. So we're digitizing it, making it as a digitized uh, program, contextualized and adapted to Arabic speaking and the Middle East and that will be a two-year project. So we're just um, in the, the early parts of that. So I think, <laughs> long story short, we know, and now solar, when the crisis started last summer, uh, we're, we're not solar providers, but we need, it became so clear that our, our uh, computer labs can't run without power. And um, so we do need that solar power. And so I'm hoping that now that we've got our demos, what I'm calling our demonstration project, which is the Sawiri School, just started on Sunday. <laughs> so it just started the solar power last week um, that we can attract uh, investors, attract funders, hopefully international governments, um, other entities that we are bringing clean energy off grid is not it's it is off grid. So you don't have any of the, um, the challenges. It's clean and as long with the education and who's not interested in, in climate action in active climate action. So I'm really hoping that with this new um, effort that we have, that we can really bring um, efforts towards that and that will sustain and that will help the digital uh, skills and access penetration. Long answer to your question, sorry. <laughs> That's amazing, thank you. I see Claudia had a question. Claudia, I don't know if you want to come on screen to ask a question or should I ask? 
Okay, I lost. So Claudia asked, what can this community do beyond computers to have to support you? Thank you, Claudia. Um, actually, that definitely computers is a huge one. Um, always funding. That's always a huge one. But we've got all of these different partnerships. So we've got partnerships on the content side. So uh, we've got a lot of proprietary content that's donated to us. Um, we don't have to pay for it. Our end users don't have to pay for it. It's preloaded on the devices. Um, on the logistics side as well, we really, it's difficult work. There is so much involved in moving things across borders and every country has its different jurisdictions. We have a lot of partnerships on that front. Uh, as we, we want to be uh, more and more throughout the Arabic speaking uh, countries throughout MENA. So any help uh, along these uh, both movements of devices, of uh, the transportation of things, as well as entering new markets would be very welcomed. Um, and in kind, we we accept and we very graciously and gratefully accept so much um, in kind support as well. Uh, it could be legal. We've had some of that. It could be um, business development, um, business modeling, strategy, strategic, what have you. So there are so many places. <laughs> so thank you for asking that. Uh, I have to say that right now, where we stand right now, our biggest challenge is to get the um, laptop donors. Um, but with, with funding, with partnerships on the clean energy side as well, we're all about collaboration and, we're, and it's all about partnerships. Yeah, thank you, Rudina. And I love what you say. We all have to work together. We're all solving one problem. And the only way we can do it is if we all work together. So thank you so much. Um, anyone has any questions? Any last questions? We've got two more minutes. Anyone else? Okay, well, perhaps I will just say thank you so much, Rodena. I am so proud and so happy that I was able to welcome you, to present you here to the summit. Um, thank you, Salwa. Thank you, Mohammed, And thank you, Huda. Inshallah, you will be a doctor. I know you will be an amazing doctor. So thank you, thank you everyone. And for everyone else, please welcome. We have many exciting events happening in the rest of the summit. Please look on the calendar and join. Thank you all and have a really lovely day and Ramadan Kareem, everyone. Bye now.